Welcome everyone again. My name is uh, Oscar Ramirez. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Startup Commons. Uh, let's start April with a new innovation entrepreneurship best practices webinar uh, that operates uh, in this case in the field of startup investment analysis uh, with a special focus on early stage projects, which are more, I would say, difficult to assess and where traditional valuation methods are not impacting as they should. So the Spanish company Kyoto, uh, having analyzed and experienced uh, this problem, uh, they decided to uh, build a solution uh, to help investors to analyze startups and scale-ups by using uh, robust artificial intelligence algorithms and, and providing predictive capacity that would lead into better investments. It's a pleasure for me uh, to invite Ali Parande, COO of Kyora, uh, to the virtual stage. How are, how are you, Ali? Good afternoon, Oscar. I'm very well, thank you. And thank you for having me today here. Is the sun shining in my beloved Spain? It's sunny and cloudy today, but it's lovely. It's still a very nice temperature and it's lovely to be outside. Although I'm inside, I do look forward to having some time outside today. Great, great. Just, just a short intro about our guest speaker today. Uh, we have uh, Ali, uh, who is a serial entrepreneur with more than 20 years of experience in the IT industry. He's author of five books, expert communicator with uh, several national and international awards. He has extensive experience in uh, SaaS and business development. And I, I also have to add uh, here because I met Ali for first time in 2013, I think so. Right. And that he's also a truly active person supporting the local ecosystem in the south of Spain, in Costa del Sol area. So uh, Kyoto uh, got our attention because uh, from a startup common side, uh, when assessing and mapping a startup ecosystems and related support functions, quite, quite often we find that uh, areas that get less attention from an ecosystem development pers perspective um, uh, and this the, the team, the team uh, area. So there is not, uh, enough focus on helping startups to get a good team. There's no um, enough focus uh, basically on helping uh, to create a balanced team or even to validate that there is a team. And therefore, if there is a lack of this kind of services, therefore there is a lack of objective data that can help to analyze ventures. And, and personally, I'm, I'm very interested in knowing how uh, Kyoto collects that information and, and the kind of indicators and metrics they are looking at to fit uh, the Kyoto artificial intelligence. So I don't want to extend more. Uh, Ali, the stage is yours. So go ahead, please. Thank you, uh, Oscar. And thank you for having me here today. And I appreciate to, my, my thanks to everybody who's come here today. I know it's a holiday for many people. It's Easter holiday and you'd like to be outside and enjoying it with family and friends. So I'll try and keep this short and I'll try and keep this interactive. Feel free to stop me. Uh, Oscar, if a question comes in through the chat, feel free to stop me and just raise your hand and ask me something and you know we can discuss it in between. So it becomes a little bit more interactive. I'm going to talk to you today about something that has taken my attention just as much as yours because I've been an entrepreneur. I sold uh, two companies and uh, I took two years off the past uh, two years and now I was looking to get involved in something new. As entrepreneurs, we're always looking for the next project and we like this. And I thought I, I came across uh, Kyoto, who's co-founder has equally become a very good friend and he's the CEO. So he got me interested in this because it's a very good subject about how to evaluate uh, early stage startups. And that, that is something actually of a pain. Our global vision is actually dis disrupting resource allocation. Let me just give you a little bit of a feedback about ourselves. I'm gonna start sharing the screen. So for those of you who may not hear me so well, you may be able to follow the screens, although it's not always the 
best thing to share screens, but uh, have I shared the correct screen now that I cannot see? It's a bit difficult. Uh, Oscar, can you confirm to me that the screen is correctly shared? Yes, yes, it is working. Okay, fantastic. So, first of all, as we as I explained, I've joined Kyoto as the COO, but we're a small team. So forget all the CEOs and CEOs and CTOs. We're all co-founders and we help each other. So I'm helping with the business development and I have a lot of expertise in software as a service and how this sector works. Raul is our CEO. He's an economist, he's an anthropologist. He's equally got over 20 years of experience in the sector and he's completing his PhD in particular in the entrepreneurship sector. And he's also a university professor and most importantly, director of an incubator locally here in Malaga, Andalusia. His brother Christian is our CTO. Uh, Christian has worked in cybersecurity companies with extensive knowledge of big data and software as a service. And finally, we have Frankie Carrero, who is our artificial intelligence expert and chief data officer, call it. He has 20 years of experience in this sector, and he's also the co-founder and founder of the company BrainSys. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about Raul, uh, because that's important and that's how Kyoto is really born into this world. Raul uh, started his PhD research in 2015, and his objective was enhancing resource allocation. Now, by enhancing resource allocation, what we really mean is channeling investment towards higher potential projects. Many projects are receiving investment, but they're not necessarily the best projects. And investors are not always able to detect and channel that investment towards the best winners. And that's why VCs have such a high investment failure. In fact, they themselves say that their failure rate is uh, nine in 10 or their success rate is one in 10. So that, that, if you look at it, is actually extremely high as in terms of failure rate. So he started looking at that, and in particularly, he focused on gazelles and startups. Gazelles and startups being companies with no more than five years of existence. And in most cases, startups have almost got zero data and zero uh, information to be able to evaluate, evaluate them using the standard economical methods that are available at the moment. So the current stage of Kyoto at the moment is we our focus is on early stage startup analysis. And that has been the focus of Raoul's PhD. And he's done over six years of work in this. And I think we're ready to come out with a product in market, which we've tested for the past six months quite successfully, and we've developed the product. So the biggest problem, as I explained, early stage project analysis is extremely complex. You're looking, first of all, at a company with no financial history, no customer data, and very little information to be able to put together using any existing formulas that would give you a valuable information. So all past historical data, we've got to forget it. They don't exist. The only thing you can look at is present and future. But to look at present and predict the future is extremely complex, and you cannot just take one variable at a time because all these variables are really interconnected and interdependent. And this makes it extremely complex to evaluate any startup. So, and this is exactly the reason why most investments fail and many high potential projects actually go unnoticed, completely uh, undiscovered by venture capitals because they're in a different location, because they've not been able to give the message in properly, and so on and so forth. The issue comes for VCs that if they were to do correct analysis of every pitch that they would receive, this would be an extremely high cost. It would require umpteen hours from many analysts, and currently most VCs use junior analysts to just look at the financial forecast and slightly the market and very uh, briefly the team and whether it actually fits with their criteria and 
their strategy of investment. So given that the cost is extremely high in order to value and evaluate every single pitch that comes in, most of the pitches are deleted and just given an immediate no within five to 10 minutes and very few make it to the next stage. This obviously is the workload that would the, the VCs, investors, even business angels would have to deal with. And if they were to value, uh, evaluate all these uh, projects completely, and that is another problem that VCs are facing at the moment. Many are looking for analysts, many just go for junior analysts to reduce the costs. And of course, all these investments are time sensitive. So by time sensitive, meaning that if you don't invest within a couple of weeks, sometimes you missed around. And if you don't invest within a couple of months, sometimes that startup may no longer exist and they may, they may just fall apart or they don't have enough cash or they, they, they run out of cash and obviously they may fail completely. And all this added with the complexity of being able to really evaluate the startup. So we know that the root cause of the failure comes by cost, workload, time sensitivity, and complexity. And these are the things that we hope to be able to resolve with our software. So to date, there has been a couple of examples of very high level programs and softwares. I'd like to mention Motherbrain and Dig. Motherbrain by EQT Venture and Dig by InReach. Now, both of these products and software are absolutely fabulous. They use artificial intelligence. They have a team of huge team of data scientists and programmers and web developers who are able to troll through Twitter and LinkedIn and DealRoom and Crunchbase to be able to identify and evaluate many startups in early stages and those that are that have a high potential of growth or could be good. But at a cost of 10 million euros each that it costs them to develop it and at obviously equally a huge maintenance cost that they need to carry on paying these developers, it is not something that others can do. So not all VCs are able to create their own program to be able to detect and evaluate loads of startups and find the best ones and channel obviously their investments and resources to the right projects. So today there's been, most of the other frag, uh, approaches have been fragmented. There's some using only AI approach to be able to find something and detect something. And some are using part psychometric tests. We've seen quite a few other programs that have come up, but they only have a tiny bit of academic insight into them or programs into them that can actually really detect the main stuff that is important in a startup evaluation. Now, what is the most important thing that investors invest in? Team. Investors always say that we invest in team, but when they invest in team, how do they actually measure things like team align alignment, compatibility, passion, and vision? Because these things are what make the startup succeed or fail. Team alignment and compatibility is what makes the team go forward or fall apart and they just go their different ways. And they need to have the same passion and they need to have the same vision. Otherwise, again, this is not going to work. Now, a lot of VCs, what they do is they have meetings with these teams over a long period of time and they do some small psychometric analysis tests and this time frame sometimes is way too long for any startup to close the round or close the round properly in a normal manner and many entrepreneurs actually fail to even get to this stage because the vc doesn't have the time or the entrepreneurs are not the type to be able to communicate themselves properly so a better solution is needed. And what we have done is actually combine academically validated knowledge to create a very specific psychometric test in order to be able to measure all the specific things that we've just mentioned. And we used AI 
algorithm to create what we call robust AI. And robust AI is actually a very well-known term. That means it's not just AI that could churn out any given thing, but it's validated and backed and tested. So we're able to measure things and variables such as team compatibility, resilience, ambition, passion, and we can provide you with uh, scoring on survival expectation, growth potential, and valuation score. It is actually very simple. All the software works in a very simple manner. All you have to do is start create a startup profile. Now that can be done by yourself, or you can have a link on your website where the entrepreneurs can register or entrepreneurs can come directly to our website and create their own profile. Once that's done, the information is uploaded, the entrepreneurs go through, all of them go through a psychometric test, which is a set of questionnaires that they all have to answer. And this is a very modifiable questionnaire so that it can meet the need of each investor. And finally, after that questionnaire and the information has been uploaded, we will provide a report, whether it would be for the entrepreneur or the investor. And then you can analyze the opportunity for yourself. And finally, our software will then allow you to accept or reject and then follow up the investment if you have accepted it and so on. So just to give you an example of the front of screen of how it would look, this is the area for the entrepreneurs where they can log in. It's a very simple process, actually. It doesn't take more than an hour to complete the whole process. There's a profile section where the entrepreneurs enter their name, date of birth, their company details, uh, the, sorry, their LinkedIn details, Twitter details, and then finally the company or the startup that they have created, their LinkedIn page of the, the LinkedIn page of the company, their website, and the various documents that are required. The third step is all of the founders will have to go through this questionnaire. And this is where we actually get to test the most important things such as team compatibility and alignment. So most VCs, what they might do is just have one or two conversations with two of the founders or one of the founders or just a CEO. Here, we actually put all the founders through the same process. So this is where we can actually test compatibility, alignment, vision, passion, and the rest. And finally, when that's done, it's they either join an investor or if they have been invited by a VC or an investor, that will also be ticked and we will provide a report. The report will then allow the investors to measure as what we've just said in a visual format, things such as team compatibility, alignment, resilience. Now you'll see this information visually and we'll show you, for example, project details, we'll score the web, we'll score the pitch, we'll give a psychometric analytical score for each founder, and then we'll give you further details and uh, scoring on the whole startup. So we'll give you a global score, which is based on valuation score, growth score, and survival score. Now I'd like to explain each single one of them. Valuation score, what we do is actually if the founders say, okay, we're valued at 1 million euro, we then go and check all the different startups that we can find in that particular sector and in that particular stage. We can check this against our own database. We have a database with over 10 million uh, data sets and we check this against Crunchbase, we check this against DealRoom and many other data sources. And we then come back and tell you, okay, the valuation score of this company is 42% uh, or 30% because it is so far away from all the other competitors in that stage or it's close and it more or less is correct. So there you can, as an investor, you can get an idea of, okay, if they're asking for 1 million euros and their valuation score is sitting at 42%, the most likelihood is that it may be the valuation should be a little bit lower and you can dig in uh, to a conversation with the founders to see why their valuation is higher. Now, it may be, it may be that the valuation is correct because they have a particular intellectual property or something 
that the other companies do not have. But this is a score that allows you to get a feel for what's out there and what you need to look out for and what explanations, further explanations you need to ask from those startups or entrepreneurs. And equally, if the entrepreneur is looking at this report, they can actually then see what is out there and how they're comparing to their peers. The growth of score and survival scores are equally two very important things, but they are not, again, exactly the success of the company. And I will explain this because it could be two types of different investors. Now, we actually know one investor, one venture capital company that says, I actually look for companies with high growth score, and I'm not so worried about survival score because we as venture capital, what we have, we have a team of experts and my, the investor himself, particularly, he likes to get involved hands-on with those entrepreneurs. So he says, if the team survival score is low, I know, okay, they may have some compatibility issue and I will find the right person to go in there, be a team leader and make sure the problems are resolved. If required, I myself sit with them and resolve all the problems and make sure we can add more and better team members in that team to make sure that the company is going to succeed. So he looks whether when he invests in startups, he looks at startups that have a high growth score because he's looking at high potential and he's not so worried about low survival scores. On the other hand, we have venture capital companies that say, no, all we do is provide money and we do not like to get involved with the team and with the day-to-day -day operation. So what we would like is a very strong team with a high survival score, and that is more attractive to us. Whereas if they have a lower growth score, that doesn't really matter because we're very well connected. And what we can do is then open doors for them and get them introduction to this company and that company and help them grow. So to interpret this data is, the, the meaning of the whole score does not mean necessarily that they're going to fail or they're not going to fly, but it allows you to interpret it and understand it and build an understanding of what you can do with that startup and where their expertise are or where their strength and weaknesses are and what is in line with your investment. We we'll then give you a project dimension where you can see how technical a team is and whether they have any intellectual property, how the team is aligned and their passion and their vision. This we get from our psychometric test. How big is the market, whether there's an international market, and how well developed the business model is. So again, this will give you an overall visual uh, view of the whole project. And the important thing here is visuality, because we are visual animals. We, we actually do not read and images to us are much more easier to digest so we like to provide all this information visually for investors to be able to make quick decisions and better decisions this is not the only part of the report that we give we have an extended part of the report which is the outlier report now the outlier report looks something like this and i'm now going to zoom into the particular areas so the upper part is actually what we provide as key insights. Now, the key insights could be some very top areas and some huge uh, positive points about that startup, or there could be some negative points. In this particular example, we can look at, for example, they have a balanced team. They have a differentiated value proposition in a consolidated market. And all the, or some of the founders have previous fundraising experience. So these three things count towards the positive points of that startup. And on a negative point or on a uh, downside, we have added or detected that their traction is extremely slow and they're overly ambitious about their achievements and their current status of the product. These are again things that we can pick up and bring to your attention so you can dedicate time to it and delve more into it to ask the entrepreneurs, okay, what is this? Why is that? And make sure that you deal with all of this before you make the investment. The part of the graph uh, of the 
outlier report that I've just shown you goes deep into looking at each particular sector. For example, we look at the number of founders that are working full-time or part-time within a project. And we then compare that with other founders and other startups in that, again, similar sector. For each of the startups that we evaluate, we have a data set for similar startups in similar projects and sectors where we can tell you, okay, if they're in the software sector, they should be dedicating at least, or the median is around 20, 30 hours per founder. And if they're, for example, in the cosmetic, they may be dedicating 10 to 20 hours and another sector may be 40 to 50 hours per founder per week. And we put that on a block chart where you can actually see whether these founders are dedicating enough hours to this project and whether they are dedicated to what they're selling to you. And in this outlier report, you actually can see whether they fall on the lower side or extremely on the upper side. And then again, delve into why is it that they're spending so much time or uh, so little time on a particular part of the project. And of course, these uh, could be just anything. We have a whole load of different areas that we examine and for each startup, we pick the ones that we think is the most important and we bring those to your attention. So on one start, uh, on each outlier report, we pick around seven to 10 different uh, points and we point, uh, bring those out in the report. For example, entrepreneurial experience, how much experience they have, uh, if they are close founders, if they know each other, and that means you know their compatibility, and if they're working full time together, and many more things. One of the other things that we ask is, for example, the lottery ticket, and that's a very key point. In the lottery ticket, if the entrepreneur wins the lottery, what would they do with the money? And if the entrepreneurs don't actually invest that money in their own project, then that actually is a fault. Or if they tell us that they're going to invest it in uh, Tesla shares, it all, all, always gives you an indication of how much they believe in their project or what their objectives are. So we bring many of these information in, uh, in into this report and to your attention. So in short, what we do is we bring focus, we improve project investment analysis and your decision-making process by allowing your analysts to identify the hidden flaws and concentrate in the critical areas of that report to delve in with those entrepreneurs to dig in and be able to bring out the rest of the issues to deal with. We enhance the whole process. We measure more accurately these complex variables, which are all interdependent and very critical to the potential outcome of the startup. We also magnify, so we've talked about the magnification and we bring out all these things in the outlier report. So then you're able to analyze a lot more and a lot deeper. And of course, this will inevitably bring you efficiency because you're achieving a lot more in a lot less time. And also of course, at a fraction of the cost. To summarize, we actually give every investor a flexible and customizable tool we know that venture capitals and business angels and uh, government funds or university funds, they do not have the same objectives. So we're able to modify our analytical program to be able to provide you the type of reports that you need to add in the criteria that you require to make sure the analytical report is in line with your investment criteria and your objective. And of course, this will achieve greater performance by being able to analyze millions of data points for each project at a fraction of the cost. We have uh, additional features. We've included data rooms and deal rooms for the entrepreneurs and the investors. We have a part which allows the investors to follow up their investments in that uh, portfolio and analyze them. 
We have automation through integration with Trello, and we have upcoming functionality. We've got integration with Slack. We're doing startup discovery and profiling. We're working on video pitch analysis, and in particular, the video pitch analysis is important because it detects how much, how well uh, entrepreneur is able to communicate and how well that pitch is formed. We can personalize the questionnaire engine, as I've just mentioned to you. We've, we've nearly finished this part, but every investor is different. So we can personalize that questionnaire for you, adding some of your questions to it or removing part of the questions that may not be appropriate for your type of investment and much more. So the problem is in most VCs that they all know that the cost, what the cost of a failed investment is because that's the size of the ticket, whether it is 10,000 euros, 100,000 euros, or a million euros. But the biggest problem is that they don't know what the cost of a missed opportunity is. Those reports and pitch decks that they receive and they delete because they're simply unable to process and to review and to evaluate because the cost is too high to evaluate all the pitches they receive because it's too complex, because they don't have the time and so on and so on. And this is very much our objective here. We have a business model which is based on SaaS and we have premium, platinum and exclusive which allows smaller venture capitals that don't analyze that many to be able to analyze maybe five to 10 reports. And it's based for small VCs or invest, uh, seed investors for up to five users. And that's only a thousand euros. And if you think of a thousand euros, that's a hundred euros per report. And we have uh, a medium uh, sort of version, which is the platinum version that allows up to 25 reports. And that's again, similarly a hundred euros per reports and finally uh, exclusive version with 5,000 euros a month. And that's again at hundred euros per report. It allows VCs to be able to deeply analyze the projects that could be winning projects and very often go amiss. Now with the platinum and exclusive, we also provide the VCs with in-depth report analysis with a dedicated analyst, because sometimes it's difficult to interpret all these data that we provide and they may require some information to see why is it that the team uh, score is so low or so high or one of the parameters they would like to have some information in. And we provide them that possibility that we dig into the data and we find out why the score has been what it is and we give them further information and the uh, response of how that analysis was uh, achieved. We also have a pay-as-you-go model for our uh, business angels who may only be evaluating one to three or sometimes 10 uh, investments per year and sometimes not even per year, it could be in a couple of years. So they can buy a pack of investment for just one, that would be 199 or three, and they can use it during any time. So one year to three years, and a three pack would cost 500 euros and a 10 pack would cost 1000 euros. And finally, I'd like to give all those who have come here today a special offer for all the entrepreneurs who are here today and listening. So we have an offer, we, if you register with us today, We'll give you a 15 minute deep analysis and call feedback where you, we will tell you about your areas of strength and your areas that you need to work on and maybe uh, may, may need some more working out before you go to these seats. And for our business angels and venture capitals who are here today, again, we have an offer that if you register with us before the end of the month, we allow you 10 free reports so you can give us a good test and see for yourself that the methodology actually works and that it's quick and that it will save you a lot of time and hassle. And also it will be a helping hand for your analysts, whether they're junior or senior. What we do is actually provide you a pre-analysis report, which you can then delve into a lot more.
So that's it from us. Uh, I've tried to go as fast as I can because I know it's a holiday today for many people and I know many people would like to go out. Uh, we enable all investors to have access to world-class analytical software, that's Kyoto. And you can contact me on WhatsApp uh, and that's my email. And I would like to now hand over to Oscar. Oscar, would you like to take over and let me know if you have any questions? You haven't interrupted me during the session, so I assume you did not see any need for it. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks a lot, Holly. Uh, it was really great presentation and really a good, good gift at the end of the presentation. It's Christmas time, or <laughs> <laughs> it's Eastern, it's right? Eastern. <laughs> it's Eastern. It's not. It's not a full full day. It's a real. It's a real gift. We've gone past. So far, yeah. So. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. So uh, we, we, we got some some questions for for you. Uh, so. Uh, Let's just start with the first one. So, so basically, um, someone is asking that uh, how many times we can estimate the same team regarding having clear picture during the longer period of time. So, for instance, if something changed, it would give us new picture about the same team. Would be able to compare reports about the same team in different stages or period of time. Okay. Uh, yes, if you do a test on a startup today and you repeat the same test in, let's say, 10 days or a month, you will probably find you will get different results. And of course, these results are based on our own data set, which is constantly updating and changing, and also the data outside. So if other entrepreneurs come and other startups come with different proposals and different valuations, the data that we get changes and uh, that equally affects the whole report. And as we said, they're all interconnected. So for, let's say if we're looking at a entrepreneur and we're going to score an entrepreneur, we don't look at just one set of data and we, have, we don't analyze it just once. So we may look at their age, we may look at their location, we may look at their experience and we may look at their gender. So if we're looking at these four to be analyzed, what we do is we run the test four times and each time we remove one of these variables and we look at them then the results and see if the results are consistent and if they're not consistent we look at which one is not consistent and then look at a way of finding the three that are consistent and eliminating the one that is not consistent the same startup can go through the psychometric analytical test and update their uh, process again, their whole uh, analysis again, and we can run the test again. At this minute, uh, we do not keep the last report, but yes, it is in our pipeline to keep the last report. So you'll be able to analyze, well, whether you're the startup founder yourself or whether you're looking at it as a venture capital, you'll be able to analyze the two different reports uh, through time. And also we offer an additional functionality, which is to be able to analyze, sorry, to compare two startups against each other. All right. Thanks. Um, another question, what happens if you don't have sufficient data for a specific sector in your database? So do you have, for example, a database covering the education sector? Uh, uh, Oscar, you cut out a little bit. So yeah. if I understood you correctly, yeah. you said what happens if we don't have sufficient data in our database? Yeah, for, for, one, okay. for, for any specific sector. OK. What, what we do is we, we don't have just our own database. So we have connections to many other databases. So we don't rely only on, on our own and we connect to a huge number of other data sources. And if we don't have it, we will look at other data sources and we'll carry on building within what we bring in. Yeah, all right. And, and then we got another question uh, as a new service that you are offering. How do you validate the truth and accuracy of your reports? Okay, that's a good question. That, and that I think best is answered with the fact that uh, Raul uh, has been doing his PhD. 
and he has been validating his algorithm and methodology over the past six years. So he's started by looking, for example, at portfolios of different venture capitals. Initially, he started with portfolios and he used his algorithm on the venture capital portfolios. And he realized that his algorithm would you know, beat those portfolios by uh, 20 to 30 percent. And then he repeated uh, after a few years with better data and a better algorithm, he repeat the same process against individual startups. So this time it was not looking at a portfolio, but it was rating and looking at individual startups. And again, he beat the historical data. And now for the past six months, what we have been doing is we've been working with a number of incubators and early stage investors. And we have been working with, let's say, non-validated startups. So we, we actually have six months of real data where we've been able to establish whether this is working or not. Yeah. And I think that also it, it is also related to, uh, to uh, when it comes to data. So I, I guess that that is something that not only Kyoto is suffering, but also many other organizations working in this in this context when basically they need to uh, reach the single source of truth uh, to, to get objective data that is uh, yeah. so 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 in, in that sense uh, how are you looking at that how because we know that for example if you go to angel list or or uh, uh, crunchbase or similar uh, platforms uh, I mean I usually or we usually see that that a lot of information there is outdated so how do you validate that process about the information that you are collecting from those data sources okay we we at the time of analysis we collect the founders have to provide us with updated information so that information is partially updated while they're doing the update and equally, we then match all that information against the other databases that exist. So if they've been to Angels Co, we check Angels Co, we check Crunchbase, we check DealRoom, and many other data sets. And this allows us to see whether there is any inconsistency uh, and all the other type of information that may exist on LinkedIn, on Twitter. So we, we pull all that information again. And the, the beauty of it is that if that was an analyst that was going to do it, it would be an impossible job. And yeah. we can do that in a much quicker way. However, that is not only the part of the information that you need, because as, as I said, there are many, or as you, you, you've just mentioned, there are many other softwares out there that already do this. So going out there and looking at the information that exists out there, is only part of the process. And that process, of course, we do, we bring it back, but then we look at an academically uh, backed research and validated formulas, which is not just Raoul's work, but also many other academics around the world that have validated different formulas for being able to detect team compatibility, being able to value uh, companies and many other factors that are uh, the what is known as the cause and the effect so if this happens that you know if this happens that that then, would happen so we put all of these together and then provide the answer back to you so it, it, it's it's the both of this which makes this robust and a much better analytical report yes all right maybe you can uh, Ali you can mention some of the existing uh, use cases that you have and, and, um, and how Kyoto and how they are using Kyoto. Sure, I, I did mention uh, earlier on that, you know, we've been working with an incubator. So at the moment, a major incubator in Spain has been using us for the past six months where we've been getting most of our details and live running. And they, they put mostly early stage startups uh, which are in MVP or ideation or uh, just product market fit area. And they, they go through us. So they've, they've already been through this process. They're already using us. And they see that the analytical report is pretty robust and pretty good. And they're using that as the basis of then their next stage decision-making on 
whether they should invest on that startup in the pre-seed stage or not. So that, that is helping him in that stage. We are equally, uh, we have signed with a number of other incubators and that are doing similar things, startup wise guys, we've just signed up with them and they're going to start using the same process in order to, because they get loads of pitch and then they're unable to say, okay, out of the hundred, which one to pick? And they're having to employ more and more analysts. So our process will say, okay, one quick line and they put it on their website. And again, everything will go through our process and they can see everything visually and pick it amongst the best and most likely projects that might be the potential projects for themselves. Yeah. So that, that is one side of it. And the other side of it is the venture capitals who uh, want to invest in better uh, startups. So through that, we will then have from all these incubators, a good list of uh, startups that have had a pre-seed round and uh, we already know their history and we're able to offer that to those venture capital companies as well. Yeah, great. Um, and that is one one question personally from 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 my side. So is is there any because at the startup commons we usually are very interested in the in in data related to uh, the context of innovation and entrepreneurship. So is there any any data that you are missing that would have like a big impact on the internal processes of Kyoto to basically to to provide better results? Okay, I uh, you, you've actually asked me a difficult question, Oscar. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm not sorry, in... <laughs> it was it was not my intention, Alice. Really, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's okay. It's a very valid question. It's a good question, but given that I, I I'm not involved in the product management and I'm not involved in the data part of it, which is yeah. the work that uh, Frankie Carrero is doing. He's our chief data officer. Uh, I'm, I'm unable to answer your question, but what I will do is I will find the answer to that and I will come back with an answer to you, which you can then again share with all the participants here today. Great, great. I'm sorry again for the question. <laughs> no, not at all. It's a very valid question and it will be good for my knowledge as well. So thank you for bringing it up. All right, so um, I think that we don't have more questions anymore. Uh, so I think that, uh, yeah, we can conclude here. Maybe uh, any final words from, from your side, Ali, before finalizing? No, I'd just like to emphasize our offer to all entrepreneurs and all the venture capital companies or business angels that are here online our offer is valid for the next month. So do email me at ap at kyoto.com or you can WhatsApp me. If you haven't got it, you can always ask Oscar to put you in touch. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. So if you'd like a chat, just send me an email and I'd love to speak to you and understand more about what your needs are. We're very flexible. We're in the early stage. We can modify the program and create bespoke parts to meet your needs. So that's more or less it. And I would like to thank everybody again for attending today and taking some time from their holiday and this beautiful day. <laughs> Thanks a lot for, 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 for taking the invitation, Ali. It was a pleasure having you here today. And for everyone, thanks a lot for, for coming a new, a new session today. And um, we are planning more uh, webinars coming for, for next um, weeks. So let's be in touch and, and let's stay tuned, all right? So bye. <laughs>